Welcome back to the Jonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas. This is my third tutorial on Zentral 3.0 64-bit edition. And as you know, Zentral 3.0 is based upon the Ubuntu 12.4 Server Edition LTS. This tutorial we're going to cover DNS and DHCP. So let's get right into it here and click on the DNS. And we're going to set up a forwarder. This will forward request out to the internet, to an internal DNS server you might have. I'll just keep this very simple, and I'll just point it to my router for right now. And we will save changes. And it already sees my domain. We're going to click on domain IP addresses. I don't really need my public interface involved in this configuration, so I will just remove that. With DNS and DHCP, we're focusing in on internal usage for computers, laptops, mobile devices, copiers, printers. Go back to DNS and host names, P addresses, and we'll get rid of the uh, public interface again. Once again, back to DNS. Now the services, text records, name server, mail exchange record, or better known as MX record, is not covered in this tutorial because I'm not setting these up. Normally, you can have a separate server handling your public DNS information, which would be these two options, or you can have your ISP do it. A lot of ISPs do provide with public uh, naming systems, so you can create these records. But internally, you run multiple servers, copiers, printers. Devices that don't pick up DHCP addresses, but yet still require a name for you to find them on the internet, because who can remember long, complicated IP addresses? Most users can't. IT guys, probably. But most end users, they want a friendly name. So since these devices, unlike a PC, will not be registering in the DNS via DHCP, you're going to have to apply a name to them. And that's called an A record. So, let's just set up one A record for a future server I will have in my upcoming tutorial. So, I'll click on hostname. And we can add a new hostname. And I'll call this one server03. And I will have to give it the IP address that I will be staticking on this server. and save changes. Now I just created a static record for server 03 with an IP address of 10.0.2.70 which will make it very easy for me to find on this network. Here's something else that's kind of neat. If you want to have two names for one IP address you can do that too by creating what is called an alias. So server 01 which is also the primary domain controller it's also the email server, or it will be the email server when we get to that point. We can create a secondary name. So people can just look for this friendly name instead of server01. You could call it email. That way it will be found on the network either by server01 or email. Now the rest of the DNS action will be handled by DHCP on this tutorial. When an IP address is given to a device on the network, most commonly a computer, it will register the name in the DNS, creating an A record, making it easy to find the PC by name. That way if you're the IT guy and you ask the end user, what is your computer name? It makes it a lot easier than the end user rambling off an IP address. They just say, my asset number is, you know, 123456 or my asset number is a PC1, PC2. However you want to set up the uh, hosting name system on your network that will register in the DNS, makes it very user friendly. So let's configure the DHCP. Once again, Ethernet Zero is a public interface. We don't need that involved in the DHCP process here. 
now we need to configure Ethernet 1, which is our internal interface. And this is what the PCs will get. So make sure you get the gateway that you want your PCs to go out on. In my case, it's 2.1, search domain, test.lan, and primary name server, which is going to be the IP address of my domain controller here. So when a computer gets an IP address, it will get this search domain, this gateway to get out, and this DNS information. So it will query the DNS here. Now if you have a secondary name server, which I definitely recommend doing for redundancy, you can apply that here. If you don't, you can always put the router information in. At least if your server is down, the users uh, won't be able to query internally as far as names, but they can still get out to the internet always good to have a network time protocol running on your network and that's pretty much it we can click on change and before we save changes let's go down here to ranges now how many IPs do you want given out do you want 10 IPs do you want 200 IPs given out what is your business needs so let's call test.lam that's the name of our domain and let's say we're gonna go out It'll start at 100 through 200. Now, a quick note. Now, what if you want to have an address within this range that you do not want given out? You want it just to stay fixed. Well, here's fixed addresses. Normally, a fixed address would be a server. Now, like in my case, my other server starts below 100, so it's not going to be a problem with DHCP. But if you want to put something within the scope, you're going to have to fix that address so the address isn't given out in DHCP and you have an IP conflict. A good example would be a copier or a printer. If you're going to set up a network printer and you need an IP address, you can go ahead and create a DNS record for that IP address. And if it falls within the scope, you're going to have to apply it as a fixed address so it works nicely with the DHCP range. And we'll go to dynamic DNS options. This is very important. Enable. Dynamic domain. And custom. And change. With all these actions I've just done, the DNS and DHCP will hand off and talk information back and forth. Very simple. Essential did such a nice job as far as administering this. I've done a few tutorials in the past where I achieved this, but there was a lot of config files and packages that needed to be installed. This, it's right in front of you. Just got to get familiar with navigating it and uh, just click. It's got to click away and it's all set up for you. Makes administrative very easy. Well, that's pretty much it for DNS and DHCP. We set up a local forwarder, a DHCP scope, some DNS information. Of course, this all can be expanded upon. These are just the basics. So thank you once again for taking time and watching my tutorial video and visiting the Jonas.net. I hope you take time to watch my next tutorial, my fourth tutorial on setting up and the creation of users and groups. And have a nice day.